Hi there and welcome back. What is psychometric testing? What are the types of questions one can expect? How do I take a psychometric test? How do I pass an aptitude test? Answers to all these and much more coming up in this video along with examples. So let's begin. Psychometric tests help to identify your skills, knowledge and personality. They are often used during the preliminary stages of an interview process. They are objective, accurate and strong indicators of future job performance. This makes them very popular with large corporations. The majority of psychometric testing is completed online, though some paper questionnaires still do remain. There are two main types of psychometric tests, personality tests and aptitude tests. Personality tests explore your interests, values and motivations, analyzing how your character fits with the role and the organization. They analyze your emotions, behaviors and relationships in a variety of situations. Aptitude tests, on the other hand, assess your reasoning or cognitive ability, determining whether you've got the right skill set for a role. Common tests include numerical reasoning, verbal reasoning, abstract reasoning, situational judgment and error checking. Now let's look at each of these in more detail and also use examples for each of them to test ourselves. Let's begin with numerical reasoning. These tests assess your interpretation of charts, graphs, data, statistics and analytics, investigating your ability to deal with numbers quickly and accurately. So let's look at an example of a graph. What businesses combined contribute 50% of the annual income? Option A, restaurants, bars and clubs. Option B, clubs and coffee shops. Option C, restaurants, bars and coffee shops. D, restaurants and cinemas. And option E is clubs and cinemas. Now I am not going to give you the answer for any of these examples. I would like you to try and answer them in the comments below. You can pause the video right now if you need to solve this numerical reasoning question. Moving along, verbal reasoning. Your understanding of written information, evaluation of arguments and communication of concepts is being tested here. You must read short passages of text before answering questions that assess your comprehension. Verbal psychometric tests challenge your ability to think constructively and use written information to construct accurate conclusions. Some tests also assess your spelling and grammar. Let's look at this example. Find the two statements that together prove Kelly has brown hair. Statement 1. Kelly has long hair. Statement 2. Rachel has brown hair. Statement 3. Rachel is 10 years old. Statement 4. Kelly's hair is the same color as Rachel's. Statement 5. Rachel has short hair. So remember, we need to pick two statements which together prove that Kelly has brown hair. Right? So here are your answer options. Option A is 1 and 2. Option B is 2 and 4. Option C is 1 and 5. Option D is 2 and 3. And option E is 1 and 4. Once again, you can pause the video here, have a think about it and leave your answer in the comments below. Next, moving on is abstract reasoning. This is your chance to demonstrate your ability to learn new things quickly. Abstract reasoning tests measure your ability to identify a set of rules and apply them to a new situation, judging how well you follow information or spot patterns. Questions often consist of a series of pictures, each of which is slightly different. You must then choose another picture from a number of options to complete the series. These aptitude tests are particularly common for IT, science and engineering roles. So let's look at the example right now. So here you see the entire grid and you have to pick the next option in the series. Right. Moving along. Situational judgment. You will be given a hypothetical work related situation and asked to choose a preferred course of action from a list of options. You may be asked to choose the most and least effective response, rate the responses in order of effectiveness or choose only the most effective course of action. So make sure you read the instructions carefully. As a relatively new graduate trainee manager, last week was the first time you assigned both individual and team objectives. 
Each one of your team was told to work together and to complete all tasks by the end of the week. Unfortunately, it is now clear to you that none of the team objectives have been achieved. In fact, your individually assigned objectives only had mixed success as well. What are you most likely to do next? Use one-on-ones to discuss effective targets and to jointly agree new ones. Scrap the objective setting idea since it clearly doesn't work. Mail the team an urgent request to work more closely together. Organize a team meeting to discuss attitudes and lack of effort being shown. I am so tempted to give this answer right now, but I'm going to hold back and I want to see your answers in the comments. Moving along to error checking. Data checking tests measure how quickly and accurately you can detect errors. They're common for clerical and data input vacancies. This method of psychometric assessment is often used to recruit for technical roles, discovering and repairing faults in electronic and mechanical systems. So here's the example. So we have some data here. We have names, emails, telephone numbers and sector, right? So here's the question. What number or email address does not appear in the table? Again, a question like this, if we have all the time in the world, of course, you will get it correct. Yeah, we can keep checking it. But what adds to the stress levels for most uh, test participants is the fact that it is timed, right? So we have to try and do this as quickly as possible. So once again, pause the video and leave your answer in the comments. While we are at that, also hit that like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel as I release HR and leadership related videos every week. Great, let's move along. Taking up personality tests. Now there's lots of tests such as Myers-Briggs type indicator, also known as MBTI. This test places you in one of the 16 personality groups. Then there is the occupational personality questionnaire or OPQ, which tests your personality to check that it fits with the job. You'll usually be presented with statements describing various ways of feeling or acting. You will then be asked to record how much you agree in a 2, 5 or 7 point scale. There is no right or wrong answer here. While there is generally no time limit, you should expect to spend between 15 and 30 minutes answering anything from 50 to 200 questions, usually online. When taking a personality test, Make sure that you take the test in a quite familiar environment. Read the instructions carefully, paying close attention to what you're being asked. Stay calm by breathing slowly and deeply. Be honest and consistent in your responses. And finally, trust your initial reactions and don't simply try to guess the best answer. Next, let's look at how to pass an aptitude test where I'm going to share with you a few tips. Number one, lots of practice. The tests will probably be online, so get used to working on a screen. As well as giving you a feel of the questions, practice will also highlight any gaps in your knowledge. Tip number two, have the right equipment. You should take a few pens, rough paper, a calculator. You won't be able to use your mobile phone in most cases, a watch or a dictionary. The employer may insist that you use their equipment, but it's better to arrive prepared. Tip number three, Read the instructions and take your time with it. Before you start, make sure you understand what you're being asked to do and how long you've got to do it. Double check any graphs, tables or images to ensure that you haven't missed anything and know what they are showing. Tip number four, be aware of the time. Make sure you know how long you've got for the overall test and for each question. If you get stuck on a question, just move on and come back as some questions can take longer than others. Now, if you're looking for successful strategies to answer HR situational judgment items as used in so many HR certification exams, then I recommend you watch this video next, where I break down the answering strategies with the help of actual question examples. Thank you for watching the video. And if you found value in the video, then like, comment, share, and subscribe. I post HR and leadership related videos every week. I will see you in the next video.